Hey, it's David, and you're listening to the Tone Bass Classical Guitar Podcast. Hope everyone's doing marvelously well. I'm back in upstate New York, Rochester. Uh, just finished up my degree at USC Thornton. It's uh, pretty crazy to think how four years have passed. It's definitely bittersweet. It's been an amazing time, but I'm really excited about the future. For those of you who don't know, I am moving to Glasgow, Scotland in September uh, to pursue my master's degree in music. And I've been asked quite a few times, am I going to keep the podcast going? And the answer is absolutely yes. There are so many amazing, great classical guitarists and musicians. Uh, In the UK alone, the classical music scene is just phenomenal in Europe. I'm always super inspired whenever I've traveled over there. Today, my buddy Mark Gergich is joining me on the show. He's a fantastic player with a lot of really unique projects, including his duos with Adam Del Monte, the flamenco guitarist, uh, his recent microtono record playing on several different custom-made instruments, and the title of that CD is Macrotono. He's also the founder of the new organization Eurostrings, so you'll hear him talk about all these projects in the interview. Since Adam's episode earlier in this season was one of the most popular, I thought I'd play a track from their debut album uh, for Duo Delaro, the title of their ensemble. Uh, this is a really fun track called Dahab Haleo. Thank you. 
no this uh this season even in the spring i'll have two new albums out one is with adam del monte who's actually um on the podcast yeah a couple already. episodes ago yeah. i'm sure he talked about that Right, Adam? <laughs> Probably not. He was talking about his opera that just got it, premiered. We, we were talking about the opera. Yeah. Well, tell me about that record. So it's with uh, you guys. So it's, it's our debut record. Uh, you know, um, we recorded the program that we've been touring for a while. Uh, some additional stuff, some uh, tangos that we haven't been playing around. Uh, those are on there too. It's a pleasant album. It's uh, called La Buena Vida, um, which I understand in my... Uh, immense uh, knowledge of spanish that that means a beautiful life something like that <laughs> does it not <laughs> and uh, how long have you been playing with adam now um it's been a while well three years at least maybe f maybe fourth we're probably going into our fourth season or fourth year of of uh you know uh, jamming together um most definitely are looking forward to discovering some new programs we've been uh, milking the same program for for a few seasons now so um and it's just so right that uh, the cd comes out at this point it's going to come out i believe in march 2019 so in uh in a few months um on naxos um and then the second album that is coming out uh, soon thereafter is um also an access release uh, called Balkanisms, which is uh, which is an album that I've done, you know, in order to kind of rekindle my connection to my homeland or you know my uh, my nest uh, since I'm so far away from home. Even though I do visit regularly, often uh, it you know lo being in Los Angeles, so many miles away, it's uh, it's a uh, you know, nostalgic and, uh, you know, personal journey each time um, I leave and uh, come to such a, a different environment, you know, than uh, home is. Um, and on Balkanisms, we'll have, um, you know, some very known things like uh, pieces by Bogdanovich and, uh, you know, uh, the... Uh, the Los Balkan An miniatures for the uh, no, not the Balkan miniatures. Uh, a piece called Levantine Suite. Oh, Just okay. this beautiful piece. Do you, do you know it? I, I think I heard you play it a while ago. Actually, maybe Levantine Suite is uh, is one of the few pieces in my in my opinion on the guitar in the guitar repertoire that floats. Like uh, I mean, guitar in its na natural, uh, you know, some production. It's it's a instrument that plucks and drops. I mean, that's the nature of the sound, correct? Mm -hmm. So that piece is so well written, in my opinion, that it, it has a feeling that it never drops. It's almost, always kind of like, uh, you know, Yoda-like, Buddha-like, sort of floating above, you know, a few inches above above the ground. Um, so that's one. Then another one is, um, uh, is a set of pieces by Miroslav Tadic, who lives actually here uh, in, well, not in Los Angeles, a little above in the valley, because he teaches at CalArts. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are just, you know, those are straight up renditions of Macedonian pieces, you know, it's just, uh, okay. super, super ethnically driven, beautiful when slow, you know, and really virtuosic when fast. Um, so those are, those are great. Those are becoming, uh, for my album after that, uh, for the next season so release, uh, an album that will feature that set in a, in a guitar concerto like form. So we're that that's happening which is exciting and uh some other pieces include uh co croatian composer boris papandopoulos with a greek uh heritage um and uh, a few cafe pieces by um by voice Ivanovic, who you know wrote this beautiful set of pieces called cafe pieces that uh, actually um dennis azabagic played a lot and then one of my favorite pieces in that album um uh is a rock and roll medley kind of a suite of, oh, okay. of popular of popular rock tunes rock and roll tunes from the 70s and 80s from the former yugoslavia region uh and that's super cool um 
you know, uh, it it starts. It it's called Stairway to Balkans. So it starts. <laughs> <laughs> so it starts. What a with, name! Yeah, what a name. Well, it starts with that phrase from Stairway to Heaven. It starts with you know the uh the cadence in a minor uh the famous one and then and then of course floats away uh and goes all sorts of uh different you know so um, you can't go to guitar center with that song why wouldn't i be able to <laughs> <laughs> well actually guitar center of all places they maybe like... maybe that would be the most appropriate <laughs> yeah place right to go to guitar center <laughs> yeah with so, not I nam know. i guess sir Maybe not Nam because of uh, royalty <laughs> problems. Yes, Is that yes? Oh, and, maybe uh, yeah. Decibel maybe. levels. Maybe I just heard, by the way, that um, um, that the group got sued by another group not Is too that long ago. Yeah, yeah, not too long ago because of that. That supposedly another group used that same phrase. Yeah, and I don't know. It, it was, never. It never went through. I mean, I it could, never went through. Of course, it didn't I go through. I kind of saw what the argument was, but at the end yeah. of the day. All Stairway to Heaven is that open guitar line, even as iconic as it is. It's just an A minor arpeggio. That's right. That's, That's all right. it it's is. A, it's a cadence in A minor, yeah. And I think the... I, I, I forgot the name of the band. I'll have to check this I out afterwards. Too. But yeah. I remember I heard an interview. It wasn't even the band that officially filed the lawsuit against Zeppelin. It was the family of the songwriter from that band who passed away. Right. Which is, you know, first of all, that just kind of poses something. Well, it wasn't even the musicians who were claiming that. Right. But, you know. Well, it's uh, retroactive royalties, you know, can yeah. be can be, can be be great <laughs> sometimes, but, you know. You know, I think in a sense the family was actually happy how it turned out, even though they didn't win the the lawsuit. They might have gotten they, some settlement out of it or... No, I, I don't think no. there was anything with that. I think it was just the popularity of that other group. Oh, um, I see. Increase. Of course you know? it did. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it. funny, you know, everyone... We just had the Super Bowl a couple weeks ago and um, everyone was talking total shit about Maroon 5's performance. Right, right, right. But... And I, and I agree. I don't think it was... I thought it was a very uninspiring performance. But... What happened? But their sales skyrocketed. Of course they did. I f no publicity is bad publicity, supposedly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So mm. even criticism can help your career. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. Um, thinking back to your CDs and albums, they all kind of have a very strong particular theme. I'm really excited to hear the Balkan record. And mm -hmm. when does that come out, by the, the way? Balkan, the Balkan record called Balkanisms, uh, also on Naxos, um, it's coming out, I believe, in June 2019. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's already recorded. Just, oh, it's totally done. I'm just, just waiting. Uh, just waiting. I'm just waiting around. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm recording the concerto album uh, with the uh, Slovenian Philharmonic Orchestra and Slovenian Chamber Orchestra in, um, at the end of April hmm. uh, back home. And which and, uh, concerto you're going to be on? Well, that? that's going to include, uh, you know, the... The former mentioned suite um, of Balkan dances, basically, basically the uh, the arrangements that Tadić did, but you know, done for guitar and orchestra. I really think that's gonna be a great pairing to something like an Aranjuez because it's so. I mean, it's so listenable and virtuosic, and can and I I think it it could be a you know next very popular piece yeah. for guitar and orchestra. I'm excited about that one. Of course, that's going to be paired by the Aranjuez because, uh, you know, you can't call yourself a classical guitarist, without you know, playing without it. playing it <laughs> or recording it even more so, you know, if you're lucky or, um, you know, if uh, you have enough money to pay the orchestra. <laughs> <clears throat> um, and uh, the, the rest of the album is still being decided on. I think I'm going to uh, rekindle my my affection towards early music by doing the, the two traditional Vivaldi's, I, uh, um, you know, I uh, did quite a bit of uh, early music studies in Vienna and that, that still stuck with me for, uh, you know, uh, now really. So uh, it, it would be a good pairing. However, I am contemplating on, uh, you know, adding a few more populistic pieces just to make this album really special and commercial in a way because I want people to be you know uh, just a, a broader mass to accept it 
uh, not just the academia. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, great, uh, getting a thumbs up, of course, from academia is fantastic. You know, one should always uh, aspire towards that. But, um, but you know, in the end, one wants uh, sales. You know, it's, yeah. I would love for this album to hit the next Grammy poll or something. You know, uh, yeah, that'd it's, be nice. It's tough finding the balance between the general Absolutely. public and. Uh, the academia in your respective field, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I that, mean, Macrotonal, needless to say, you know, sold <laughs> not very well. <laughs> <laughs> Even though, you know, I just, uh, I can't believe that more people don't listen to Microtonal music, you know, it's yeah. just so beautiful. Um, academically speaking, of course, challenging to understand sometimes, but uh, uh, no, I mean, it was a total joke. Of course, I knew from the get-go that... <laughs> It's a, it wasn't going to it's be. It's a money pit, you know. But I was, I was very proud, and I am very proud of the project because it was an extension of my uh, doctorate, you know. Um, and it, uh, you know, it ended up being considered for the Grammy, so it was fantastic yeah. in the end. You know, it's yeah. uh, all worked out nicely, and uh, I think the album, <clears throat> as it is, it's it's a wonderful product. And, and tell me the program on that album because it of course has some very modern microtonal music but you're also playing some uh, traditional repertoire like the Chaconne. Correct. Yes, I mean the idea was to <clears throat> to pair and so compare and contrast really um pieces uh that that were commissions but based on, you know, somewhat ethnic Music either from the Middle East or even further down to you know Indonesia, gamelan music, um, uh, Mediterranean music, and so forth, and and pair that with uh, you know what one calls uh, historical temperament, you know, and those are many, you know. Um, it uh, it took a long time for the history to settle with uh, equal temperament. So before that, you know, we had. Uh, all sorts of temperaments uh, preferring different intervals. So the idea was to pair, you know, uh, music by Bach to uh, to a contemporary commission, you know, and, and see how that balances out. And um, the whole album feels like kind of a, uh, a progression for the ears. It's not like uh, each piece just tells a story as the entire album sort of hmm. has an arc. And uh, that makes it even... Uh, uh, that makes me even prouder of it. You yeah. know, that we spend enough time thinking about that and that, uh, you know, uh, one, one can actually sit down, you know, with, um, as you like, uh, David, uh, scotch, you know, glasses scotch or something, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, enjoy the album as a whole, not just like a piece by piece, yep. you know, like I'm just interested in that particular piece. This actually makes sense to listen as a whole, uh, which speaks to the theme of the CD in any case I uh, personally uh, as much as it's uh, as it's wonderful to have uh, you know diverse repertoire being recorded I think thinking you know uh, thematically about projects as you know as of course pop rock you know all these people do it's uh, why not do that in classical too you know at least you have some kind of a some kind of a story that an album can tell. Yeah, because it is quite typical for a classical guitar CD to just be titled "Guitar Recital," and it's well, just or a, not just a guitar CD, just any CD. Any really, I mean, CD. it's uh, it's uh, it's just becomes uh, it's become um, kind of normalized for you know, <clears throat> for a CD to be able to include just really anything. The only problem is, of course, that um, if I'm listening to a CD of uh, a random repertoire, that perhaps as a re as a recital, you know, uh, has uh, a lot of sense. But then, in that case, I will look for for the uh, player. You know, I will look for a Horowitz, or I will look for a you know Oistrak, or these guys. You know, I will look for that because I'm listening to them play something i'm not listening to a repertoire that says something and is played by them um and uh nowadays of course as we all know there's so many wonderful players everywhere uh that simply just saying i am you know i'm a complete devotee of just this one person almost is almost a rarity um you know to come by um before, as as I understand, I wasn't part of that generation. Um, 
even though I'm much older than you, uh, you are uh, uh, David. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> you're my uncle. I am almost an uncle, Uncle yeah, Mark. Uncle, uncle Mark, yeah. Uh, really? <laughs> right, I'll edit that one out. Don't worry. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was told that uh, once upon a time, you know, one would take a, a, an LP and carry it around because it represented who you listened to. You know, it was like a sense of belonging. It uh, created kind of a society. You know, um, I think nowadays that's a little less so yeah. um so i think theme uh theme work in in particular is in that case important um yeah and and if i transition that into you know into just event creating which i have been um you know uh, kind of privileged to be a part of as of late um it's i think is important i mean i i just look always at what some someone like an LA Philharmonic Orchestra or popular, you know, popular other organizations around town in Los Angeles do, you know, uh, like the industry or something, you know, they always create a kind of a story uh, to each single event or to each single festival that they do. And then it becomes an event uh, and not just music being played. Um, yeah. And that is what you know i found inspiring uh amongst other things in los angeles i think it's uh it's a city where one can learn the craft of business uh or creative business let's put it that way and um i must say i'm missing that a little bit in our world um you know and uh a few years ago you know these kind of Semi frustrations, not really frustrations. It's just like kind of like uh, uh, you know things that I noticed became became a program. Uh, I I wrote it out uh, as an idea of what I think could be the next few steps, um, you know, into the twenty first century for uh, the wider classical guitar world, and uh, you know. Um, a few a few months so, or I guess a year later that became uh, you know euro strings which now is kind of a, it's it's a big thing at least in Europe um, but more and more societies are joining uh, worldwide uh, many many interested parties in in uh, in you know in Asia of course there's societies in the states that we work with but really it's a it's a European based platform that creates uh, you know, uh, kind of a brainstorming unity for our world, and that's great because it's not just it's not just one person saying what he thinks. It's many people coming together for conferences and and talking about the problematics of you know making money versus losing money or breaking even. You know, of course, it's a business. We have to make money. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's become too normalized to just break even. Um, and uh, being creative in that approach, you know, what it means to contemporize, uh, modernize education, you know, what happens when brilliant young players come out of school and, you know, they don't know anything about the business. They don't know um, what it means to manage something or, you know, uh, or produce something or, you know... Um, it's all very important because there's many, 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 many of us. And in order for us to actually survive as a creative unity and not just within academia, which of course is important, um, we need to be thinking about that. And I, um, really the underlying kind of focus on, of Eurostrings as a unity of uh, guitar festivals around you know, is that, and of course, there's charitable components and, you know, um, audience development components and all that. But I'm excited that I feel uh, for the first time, uh, at least in Europe, people are like really uniting, you know, yeah. and there's this kind of like, there's this spirit of let's do something better. People want to do better, you know, um, and uh, it's exciting for me to see that something that, essentially was, you know, um, a couple of scribbled lines on a toilet paper, you know, became a, a factual thing um, and is growing. Yeah. So that's exciting. And how long is Eurostrings? 
it's ben it's a now? young baby. I mean, it's a baby. It's a it's an infant, not an infant. It's a baby that barely starts to walk. It's about a year and uh, three months or so. You know. Okay. So so, so it's it, really it, start. we just started to walk our first our first full on steps. Uh, we still don't know how to talk. <laughs> We're still blabbering a lot. <laughs> no, I mean it's kidding. Of course, the mission is is, is clear, but um, it's it's the beginning stages of yeah. something. I'm hoping to be, you know, to be monumentally beautiful. Yeah, mm. and it's geared mostly towards younger players, either who are still in school or just graduating. Or, well, um, here's the spiel that I give to anyone who who asks me. Um, it's not just that. That's a major portion, of course. Mm-hmm. So we have, number one, educating organizers. You know, so we come together, we think together, we make decisions better together, you know, organizers. Because we, we have to understand that in business, we we can't do this forever because of passion. We have to, we have to turn it around and make it a, a decent business you know so that's number one education of of uh, you know the organizers number two it's it it is yes education and um you know and touring uh capacity for for those brilliant young performers you know some still in school some fresh out of school but in, in principle all of them major competition winners you know but to give them an opportunity to give it, to have a taste of different markets, to uh, network, to you know, hopefully learn uh, a thing or two about the uh, uh, the industry, you know, mm-hmm. um, so that the, at the end of the year, you know, once the cycle uh, c- cycle uh, concludes, that they you know have this added value to their career. Um, we tour many of them in a year. Uh, there's uh, this year, I think seventeen of them tour. Oh wow! Within the year, um, they're called Eurostrings artists, uh, and they're all incredible players. Um, the number three, the component is that charitable component where we um, award a lot of scholarships for you know students wanting to come to Europe but not having the funds, and that is worldwide. Anyone can apply. Yeah. Um, and we've had people from, you know, uh, Chile come, <laughs> you know, or, uh, or, you know, uh, Middle East or, uh, you know, all over Europe and so forth. Um, and of course there's, um, there's component of, of giving guitars away to people who need that. Um, and of course various festivals, uh, deal with that separately. Then the, the, you know, the, the, uh, uh the number four would be then, um you know how to how to tackle audience development issues with classical guitar and you know it's uh really the answer is through uh you know through platforms that are handheld you know it's like you know what what popularized rock music actually I'll just ask you what popularized rock music in the past I, I guess five years maybe a little more than that ten years which game it was it? Guitar Hero. Exactly. So why does a classical guitar have a Guitar Hero? Is, a, is my is my. It's very true. You know what? What, it, what you what, know? What, I I know it sounds like a joke saying that, but it's so true. It is totally true. One of my I favorite, never heard of Dragon Force before Guitar yeah. Hero. Now One of my favorite bands, Muse, who I just saw last week uh-huh. when I was telling friends I saw them, they mm. asked, oh, wait, who are they? Yeah. And I said, oh, it was that last track on Guitar Hero. Of course. They're, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course it's we know. It's kind of, it's, it's beautiful in a sense. It's great. It's great. It's so, so anyways, you know, there are techniques, you know, we just don't do them very often. Um, uh, and blah, 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 more things and more things, you know, uh, just kind of subsidiaries of the main ideas. But, but, uh, you know, I hope, I hope this kind of unity will will bring forth the uh, awareness of importance of all these points that I that I briefly described. Yeah. Um, I think it's time. I think it's time for classical guitar to you know make some make some real changes. Ching, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Yeah. And, you know, everyone, or I, I shouldn't say everyone, but a lot of people, you know. 
in older generations, they talk about, oh, how the music industry isn't what it is or what it used to be, and it, it's going to be dead uh, before you know it. I mean, th- the thing is, if we keep going the way we're going about things right now, staying in very traditional settings, not really programming things mm. correctly, not appealing to larger sets of audiences, that's totally true, but having people like you build these organizations um, and take advantage of everything that we can can whether it's with the programming using technology to our advantage not going oh well nobody listens to a cd all the way through because Mm -hmm. of all these streaming services and everything there's just so many different ways to go about it and i think if we look at it in a positive way in more of a a entrepreneurial way like you are i think we're in great shape honestly i uh i i have to honestly say i've you know i uh, this weekend has been the Grammy weekend, you know, and uh, and I've been uh, privileged to be, uh, you know, a part of these manifestations. I, I I had a lot of meetings, you know. I went to a lot of parties, you know. Um, and um, the one thing that's common, and of course that's that's a you know billion dollar biz, uh, you know, kind of a business, you know. Uh, Music business has a lot of money. I mean, it's in in principle, but what I what I thought what I saw, and what inspired me is that, you know, it's these people, even though we sometimes deem their music to be lesser, you know, um, which, you know, we can certainly say everyone has a personal preference, but what they all have is a resourcefulness, you know. Um, <clears throat> So my question is, uh, let or what I w- what I claim is let's let let's all be resourceful. Why can't we, you know, s- uh, study what we study and then uh, and come out of school and uh, you know figure it out? It's I, it's a beautiful. I mean, g- looking at the fact that most of these people who actually make uh, uh, serious uh, um, serious money out in that business, you know, most of them can't play very well, you know, and we play incredibly well, you know, some, uh, some compose incredibly well, you know, why isn't there resourcefulness coming from us also, um, that enables that, um, is, I guess, is, I guess, uh, you know, my biggest kind of concern and question, um, I think some programs around some uh, university programs are actually thinking of that, uh, you know, with great intensity and uh, involving industry leaders into their programs, which is fantastic. I think that's that's exactly what needs to happen, you know, so that we so that students are are uh, privy to that kind of information early on, you know, not later on, you know. Uh, but in any case, I mean, it's uh, it's a big world of opportunities and. Uh, I'm absolutely glad to be a part of it, which, you know, uh, in, in a weird way makes um, makes my move, my personal decision to move to this city, uh, you know, in many respects, the right one, because it's here that just my eyes opening, opened incredibly, yeah. you know, it's just, uh, and everything, be- everything became kind of intriguing, you know, um, I was born and raised in Europe, you know, and uh, for un- up until 20, um, 24, I believe, uh, you know, I haven't actually moved anywhere from Europe, you know, and um, when I came here, just like, you know, my uh, everything, it was, the life just became so big with possibilities, yeah. you know, and that was fantastic. Um, and I wish for everyone to to experience that. LA is a very special city in mm-hmm. regards to how diverse mm-hmm. all of mm-hmm. the arts are. You know, I was in Rochester, New York, mm-hmm. my whole life until mm-hmm. I came out here to study, and and I love my hometown. Uh, but I remember it was kind of like you when I first got here. My eyes 
were astonished. Yeah, I remember uh, uh, our drive uh, uh, in the convertible when you yes. were like, it was it was your first year. My fir- it was like my first weekend in LA. Yeah, and, and we we went with like it was nice weather and convertible. And you were like, this is so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good introduction. To yeah, LA. I remember that. That was cool. That was cool. <laughs> Coming yeah. back from uh, Brian Head's. Uh, Breakfast party. Oh, that's right. That's right. Back in the a... days when I used to wake up for breakfast. Oh, you don't anymore? No. Oh, I feel you. I feel you. I, I wake up to drink coffee and then I go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mark, for being on the show. Please join me next Sunday for a conversation with the renowned Ben Verdery. I'll leave things today with the opening track of Mark's record Macrotonal, This is a wonderful lute sonata, the 23rd and A minor of the Baroque composer Weiss being played on a microtonal guitar. By the way, this album was produced and engineered by John Schneider, who I had the opportunity to talk with last weekend, so you'll hear from him later this season. I'm David Steinhardt, and we'll see you next time for the Tone Bass Classical Guitar Podcast. (laughs) ¶¶